a Hyundai, a Ford, and a BMW drive themselves to a bar. Well, they can't do that. There's no autonomous cars available. Not in 2020. But there have been huge technology changes and huge changes in the automotive industry itself. Especially and we're going to talk for about 2020. Boy, we've had a tough year. We're going to cover the good, the bad, and the ugly. Coming, coming up. up. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren. And I'm Paul. And here at Car Coach Reports, we don't just do vehicle reviews and first looks at brand new vehicles. We give you knowledge and information so you can make great decisions and get car smarts because we believe knowledge, knowledge is, is power. power. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. So let's jump right into it with what we believe our favorite vehicle of 2020 was. Now, I, oh, I know man. we've talked about this before. There's mm -hmm. a ton of vehicles that came out and we were driving three, four vehicles a week. It was crazy. And, and all the reviews are listed on our channel. You can check it out. I mean, it just, just one after the next, you can go on. For, it's binge watching <laughs> if you've got nothing else to do. Right, but I, th I think there was a lot of really important vehicles that were launched in 2020. And while, you know, you may be like, well, you know, nothing was really going on, right? No, there's a oh. ton of stuff going on. You know, the, the Corvette and the return of the Defender and the Bronco and a whole bunch of cars like right. that. Uh, Genesis's first uh, uh, SUVs. SUV, yeah. The GV80. Okay. That was right. pretty impressive. A a incredible vehicle. Um, and I really enjoyed filming that one too. Um, so what was your number Number one. This is a tough call because, you know, I love driving fast vehicles, but then again, there's such cool innovations. I, I'm torn between the Ram 1500 TRX and the Defender. The Range Rover or the Land Rover Defender has been gone a long time and it's back. I mean, it's, you know, if you want to make a statement, you order it just loaded with the snorkel yeah. at the top so you can go like yeah. three feet into water or snow. That'd be so cool. Just yeah. like he's a snorkel going by. <laughs> oh my God, the packages they have on that vehicle cool. are really cool. I mean, if yeah. you want to go like it's almost like glamping style type vehicle. It is yeah. really high end off roading. But they're but they're both significant vehicles that came out this year. Right. I mean, what are your thoughts? So I'm going to go in a slightly different direction and and similar though. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the Bronco Sport that came out this year. Now I know that the Bronco isn't out quite yet. They're saying late the, next year. Late. Uh, 2021, which is really unfortunate because I can't wait to drive it. Oh I, my gosh, they're gonna the Jeep's not gonna be happy when. They oh see no, these it's things. gonna be a, it's gonna be ferocious. It's gonna be bloodthirsty. But <laughs> we we got videos on that too. You want to check that out on our channel? Yeah, but I think that the Bronco Sport is going to make a big splash, and you're gonna see a lot more of them on the road coming up. I mean, this is the return of a massively popular brand. People are still driving their old Broncos, and the fact that Ford decided to revive this brand and it's you know it's the the Bronco Sports, a daily driver SUV, right. but it's also a capable off-roader. So I think that it, it's a, I think it's the most interesting story of the year, probably next to the Corvette C8. But you know what's but weird? But the Bronco's my pick. The Bronco Sport didn't make it to SUV of the year finalist because yeah. it would end up, I, we talked about it in the, on our previous video. You can mm. check that out up here. But but the, they had the Mach-E. Ford pushed hard for that Mach-E, and I won't call it Mustang. Because it's not a Mustang. No, it's a cool vehicle, though. I have to admit, when, it was, when, it was cool. when we were riding around on it, if you didn't take out the Mustang name, understand that it's a Ford it's electric an SUV. vehicle. It it looks pretty good. It drives yeah. pretty good. It's got cool tech. Sure, yeah. yeah, why not? And and I think it's it's got a good place on there uh, on the uh, on the finalist for Noctoy. I really think that Bronco Sport should have been up there instead. I agree. But I agree. But it's the will of the judges. And and I'm only one of 50. Yes. So I only get to make one 50th of a decision. <laughs> so, I mean, so you can go back and check out our videos here on the Bronco and the Defender right. uh, and, and see what our thoughts are on right. that and uh, all the fun that we had driving both of them. What do you think about some of the technology, especially like GV80? We spent a lot of time in the yep. Genesis SUV. They sent it to us early for a first Hours. look. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and we were restricted on time and at the first version came to us we couldn't even drive it yep. and the second version we got we got to drive it and review it which was good but uh, when we just even when we just had it for mm -hmm. those couple of hours that one day it was I, impressive. We, we were blown away by the technology in it and i think one of the really cool things was the the combination between the the big infotainment display mm -hmm. and the audio system and they had like you could listen to the orchestra and the sounds of the forest well, and, a lot of uh, audi does that too i mean right. bmw all the premium sound systems all the premium brands has I, I do have to say though i'm never i never ceases to amaze me the 3d sound is it feels like you're like moving through environments and such they, they do a good job and that's yeah. why they do that sounds of nature which is included you know there's a lot of their cool 
pieces of technology that are becoming more popular. We've seen it last year and the year before, but Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis, I'm waiting for the brands to pick up on yep. this because Hyundai had it in Lane Watch. It was part of their like Honda optional safety features. What this was, was when you turn on your turn signal left or right, the gauge in front of you turned into a camera for your blind spot, both left and right side. And yep. you think, oh, why would you want that? Oh, no. I, and I usually shut off some of the weird safety features that intervene and their nannies, but this I thought was really well done mm. and I'm waiting for that to become a standard. Right. And I'm not a big fan of digital gauges, although there are exceptions like Audi's virtual cockpit, I think is amazing. Oh yeah. And uh, it only gets better every, uh, every generation that they put out a Mercedes? new version. But I, but I have to say that that technology turning one of the dials into your blind spot mm -hmm. uh, camera is so helpful because there are some vehicles, especially as safety gets becomes more and more important, the A, B, and C pillars get bigger and bigger, and your blind yeah. spots become the size of Alaska yep. or bigger, and all of a sudden, you now you kind of need a camera, but it's actually a really nice feature to have. I, I appreciate that I just one reviewed a, a car today. Uh, earlier in the day and I was realizing how big the blind spots have become. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I noticed also is Mercedes with their M bucks and Mercedes Benz user experience. One of the smartest things they did for technology, which I think really stands out for 2020. And I told them they should, they should create a demo video that runs in the car when, when people go to look at the car. Yeah. So if you miss a turn, we've all done that. You're on following your navigation. And it says, make a right turn. You're like, oh, I missed it. It, when All you reroute time. yourself, the arrow goes from small to big. It's like in your face, like, hey, dumb dumb, make the right turn. It's <laughs> it's great because it actually shows you the camera in front of you and yeah. the roadway and the real life intersection. I, I do have to say, when I was test driving uh, one of the uh, one of the Mercedes that we had, it completely threw me off. I, I was like, I whoa, what is this? And I think I was on the phone with you at the time. I'm <laughs> like, you wouldn't believe what's going on in the car right now. This I is know. so it's cool because it, it awesome. looks like it's directly in front of you and actually shows you like, yes, you are at the correct street. You turn now because I can't tell you how many times. And people, I think the reason why people it. miss turns is because they're looking at the map and they're like, oh, well, that turn's not right here. It's like up there, right? Nope, it's right there. And, and so having this it's technology really, really is really well designed. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. And I, it feels yeah. like real augmented reality AR experience. Yeah, that's what they're starting to do. Genesis mm -hmm. is starting to add that in as well. So uh, you're seeing a lot of brands starting to do that, but I think Mercedes was the first to market on Yeah, that. I really enjoyed that one. I also have to say that uh, Michelin has come out with some very cool technology for their all uh, for their all season tires. Yes. We, and we've talked a little bit about Michelin uh, tires and their in the their new V-shaped tires. It was We covered yep. that on uh, one of the TV hits that I did as well. And it, it's meant to be for an all season tire. Remember, 40 degree rule. If it yes. gets cold outside, Do you got to switch to your tires. winter tires. But if it doesn't get that cold, if it doesn't get that snowy, the, the all season tire might be the trick for you. And I mean, the technology where they have designed the sipes in such a way where they have this V and they also have these little pockets, like mm -hmm. almost like a like when you have a melon cutter and you make yeah. up the little melon balls. Right. It's almost like that, like tiny little microscopic right. ones that are into the tire. And it, it improves both your performance and handling, but also. Uh, spreading the water and the snow out from the tire right and it's probably the the one uh, all season tire and i'm sure other uh companies will kind of get this technology well, they all going. have different stuff i mean if you're right, talking about winter tires it's it's, it's, it's a bridge so, it's bridgestone blizzak or michelin right. x ice i just have to say i was particularly impressed by that by that technology and, new, and how yeah. you can drive it for so much more cross of the season climate is the yes cross name. climate plus two Plus, well, Cross Climate 2, I think it is. Cross Climate 2, sorry. Because the right. plus was the old one, the two is the new one. Right. Anyway, very, very cool tire. So yeah. I, I think that, you know, it's, it's and we always think about technology as, oh, well, the screens and, you know, right. all, the, all the all safety. The, yeah, all the safety interior stuff that you can touch and feel. But there's a lot of really cool technology that's being developed every year that is not necessarily tangible. You know, uh, when when they improve suspension systems and braking right. responsing and all things the, like the, that. What's involved. And it's a lot of right. it's computer generated. I just worry about what the restoration like of these vehicles are going to be. Down it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. And that's why people They're making kind the of, cars disposable. <laughs> that's why at a certain point, restoring cars stops at a particular year right well, now. I hope not. But we'll start seeing that. Yeah. Right. I think it's like about the 80s or the 90s. And once the big computers start coming and that's where you, you kind of need like a computer repair guy to come in and fix your car. <laughs> yeah, this, this is our second topic is some of the technology that's cool that's come out. Mm. And uh, not just that is I'm starting to see a lot of AR being used like goggles to repair cars. Yeah. Because if you've got a car that's got a problem, especially for these fiber optics and all these mild hybrids, yeah. 
you got a problem. And the guy's like, well, I'm in Germany or I'm in Korea. How am I going to help you? Well, you put on these goggles and they can see what you see and guide you through the process. This is starting to be some of the cool technologies that you're seeing, not just in the car itself, mm. but in the repair process. And I think that's going to be more and more common. So mm. if you're looking for a job in the auto industry, don't assume that it's turning wrenches anymore because it really isn't. It's a lot of computer stuff and it's yeah. really cool. Very complicated stuff. Yeah. Our third question is, what are you looking forward to for 2021? We've had a lot of great cars coming out, even with everything going on. But 2021 promises a lot of really cool vehicles and a lot of cool, I don't know if you call this propulsion might be the word. Right. So that's my that's my favorite thing that's coming out. And I hope it's coming out in 2021. The enthusiast network of, of fans of Mazda have been going bananas. And even people who aren't fans of Mazda. So if you don't know, the rotary engine, the Wankel rotary engine, the Wankel rotary <laughs> engine. Um, that was what Mazda started with. Right. So they started that with that. And the RX-7 and the RX-8, these famous cars, they they were removed from the U.S. because they couldn't the get, I know, and they couldn't get the new generation of rotary engine to fit with the regulations that were in place uh, in many places in the world. So they ended up dis discontinuing the RX-8, which is a real shame. Mm -hmm. But... It is entirely possible that they are bringing back the rotary engine. I mean, they're actually doing a lot of really incredible things like engines without rumors. spark plugs and a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, the rotary engine coming back, if that happens, it's it's going to take the, the news by storm. It's going to be probably one of the biggest automotive stories of the decade. Why is that? Because it's been gone for so long. Because the, the amount of engineering that has to go into making the, the Dorito engine, uh, mm -hmm. people who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. Um, the, it's hard to make it both fuel efficient and reliable, but it's so easy to get, to give it power. Mm -hmm. So I think if they can figure out some way to bring it back to market, especially within us regulations, and if they can make it reliable, especially for current standards mm -hmm. from consumers alone, I, I think it's going to be incredible. So I'm very excited for that. Oh, well, as far as propulsion, I'm excited about hearing more and more, including from like companies like Hyundai about hydrogen. Yes. Now I'm always talking about electric cars. That's great, but the grid can't support it. The infrastructure isn't there. Tesla has their own charging station. They can charge on all the others. All the others can't charge on Tesla. All this has to be sorted out. There needs to be one connection to charge whatever electric car you want. Well, there still isn't enough infrastructure. And without that all in place, it's not going to be a big take. But hydrogen is everywhere. It's in the air. Mm -hmm. And what comes out the tailpipe is water. And that's really cool. So Hyundai's put a ton of money into putting in hydrogen. They can use it to power electric vehicles they can use it to power combustion engines i really hope they go back to that because yeah while while hydrogen fuel cell technology is very cool where the hydrogen powers the electric batteries that that's fine and all and they and they have hybrid versions of that as well mm -hmm. with with gasoline engines and and hydrogen powered electric it's cool uh, batteries stuff, and it works mm. but i think the coolest thing is something i did a science project on back in eighth grade I which is that. <laughs> <laughs> which is hydrogen combustion engines. If they bring that back, that would be massive and right. it would actually save there's there's no um there's no emissions. So here's what they're calling it in China. Because first they said all electric vehicles. That's we're all gonna go all electric. Then they realized we got a problem with infrastructure. Mm. We can't support every car switching. So they came up with something called blue gas, which is hydrogen. And it's how they capture it. And they put over six billion, sixty billion dollars into the largest blue gas station in the world, and it's in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. And so that technology could start coming over here quickly. And what that means is they're using hydrogen to power other things. That light mm -hmm. compressed natural gas, another great solution. We're gonna see algae and a lot of cool propulsions. The algae out. one's very interesting. It is interesting. I don't think we're there for algae for tomorrow, but <laughs> CNG is being used today and hydrogen is going to be coming in for next year. Yeah. So what about cars? What are you thinking about for 2020? What's What are you like super excited about? Well, there's a lot of stuff coming up, but yeah. I'll go back to what I said for number one. I think the Bronco coming out is going to be huge. Oh, yeah, I, they're going to sell them like crazy. Oh, yeah. They're going to sell like hotcakes. It's going to be the best thing since sliced bread. Ah, da dum dum. <laughs> yes. So I think that it, because it's such an important vehicle, like I was saying, and it's going to go head to head with Jeep, I think that's going to be a huge story for 2021. And of it course, is. we know that's going to happen. Their car is going to be out by this time next year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, so that's what I'm excited about. How about you? Okay. Well, if you're on the Ford subject, we did <laughs> we did the TRX. Uh, Chris Saley, who's one of our contributors, uh, helped us review the uh, the Ram 1500 TRX. Mm -hmm. 
So, of course, Ford's not going to let them just take the lead. They're going to jam that Shelby GT500 engine into an F-150. And I want to be in line for one of those. I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I may have one of those. I'm working on trying to find out if this is true. But this looks like if it's going to happen, Ford doesn't make announcements like you see in other manufacturers. They're just going to do that. I'm also looking forward to a high-performance version of the Corvette. Mm -hmm. Now, we hear there, and I'm not exactly sure when it's going to come out because they've had some production issues with just getting product out the door. There's going to be a Zora Corvette coming. That would be a collectible. Zora Arcus Duntoff yep. is the father of the Corvette. I think that's exciting. But there's like so much other cool stuff, like normal cars, as they as you're watching people leave cars and go into really impressive SUVs. Oh yeah, there's a lot of them out there, and I mean even the sports cars. Like how I love how Hyundai has come out with N-line versions of all of their vehicles, and mm -hmm. of course Lexus is doing that with their um, with their models as well with the F mm -hmm. uh, F Sports. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's kind of this resurgence of, and everyone is really afraid. Oh, sports cars are dying. You know yeah, the manuals you see all dying. the AMGs and the RSQ8, and an which AMG is an awesome version vehicle. of every single Mercedes. Pretty much. Right. And BMW uses M and M lines. Everyone's right. sort of saying, well, you could have the regular, the slightly sporty looking, but not sporty. And then the sports car. <laughs> so you're seeing that with like AMG and you're seeing that. So everyone's doing it. Right. And I think you're seeing that more and more. Even Cadillac's coming out with their performance vehicle as well. Mm. I think that these are really exciting. And you know what? I think one thing we talked about before we started doing this was... Everyone's saying, oh, no one wants manual transmissions. Oh, no, people still want it. They there's, want them. There's only like a dozen cars in the market that actually have manual transmissions as an option. Uh, Mini being one of the biggest ones. You can get them on every version except right. for the new John Cooper Works models. But uh, there's just a lot of vehicles. The new Hyundai um, Elantra GT yep. is going to come out and, with a manual and option. And the Veloster. Right. And uh, Porsche is bringing it back on their GT3 RS. Yes, I'm looking on forward to seeing that. I think they brought it back on their 911 as well. Well, the Mustang still has it. The the Mustang still has it as an option for now, mm -hmm. but the Corvettes, it's gone. I know. And people are really mad. Well, I have a Shelby GT 500. Mm -hmm. You can check out the video of that right up there, mm -hmm. but it is paddle shift and it's frustrating because I, 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 I want to shift this thing. And you know, it's really frustrating Especially with 760 horsepower. You want to be able to, but the <laughs> shift, the, the paddle shift, if you just let it shift itself is it, Shifts faster than the blink of an eye. But I don't care. I want to shift it myself. Exactly. And that's what I keep talking to manufacturers about. Yeah. And they keep saying, oh, people don't want them. Yeah, we do. Because Enthusiasts it's Enthusiasts want them. <laughs> it's not about that. It's about controlling the power. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that's, and I mean, I talk about that all the time. These momentum cars and it's mm -hmm. about the experience of driving and, and, I'm I'm a little antiquated, especially for my age, but I I'm not a big fan of like having too much technology. I want to drive the car and not I think, be driven. Right. And I think there's some people that, you know, being driven, that's great for them. They mm -hmm. just, I just need a vehicle to get me from one place to another. I want to be relaxed and comfortable. I want to live in my car like I live in my home. I want to have everything available to me. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people that say, but I'm, I want to drive. And, and not only that, but like I don't feel comfortable allowing the car to drive for me. And that's kind of where we right. joked about the autonomous cars at the beginning, yeah, but right. we are nowhere near that. Well, I got two more questions for you, okay, right? Okay, let's do okay. it. The, the second to last question is, what's the future of rideshare? Do you think people are going to do it after COVID? Yes. I think there's going to be less of it. I, it's amazing how many people I know that live in major cities who called me and said, I need a car now. And I'm like, well, this isn't forever. And like, I don't care. I'm never going to find myself trapped and relying on a cab mass transit uh, Uber or Lyft, pick a brand. Which is funny because Uber and Lyft and all those other services have only gotten bigger and they're super popular, but they're not available everywhere. And I think that's where people are starting to think like, and here in Buffalo, we do have rideshare services. Sure we do, but, yeah. You know, I ask for one to come and it's 30, they don't show 30 up. <laughs> minutes or they don't show up right. or whatever. And it's they, not and, reliable. And people would rather drive themselves. In a city, I'm sure it's great. I, I live, Sometimes they're not reliable either. We've right. all had cabs that you know don't want to pick you up or a car mm -hmm. service doesn't show or they cancel. So I think people want that reliability when things aren't the way they expect them to be. They want mm -hmm. to be able to get their family and their stuff and put it in a car and go. And I, I think that you're seeing used car market was on fire. And mm -hmm. I think it's gonna balance out for twenty twenty one. Right. And I would and I would just say I don't think it's a I don't think it's about safety. I think it's about being able to do what you want when freedom? you want. I think it's about freedom. Freedom? Interesting. I've commented on that before. Okay. Okay. Now Last the question. final question. 
So if you're having fun with us, make sure to comment. We love your comments. Put in your opinions. We want to know what you think so far. Yep. We respond to all the comments down yes, below. We do. And of course, like that and share with your friends because we want to hear what everybody has to say. We like to open the community and have this conversation. Yep. All right. The you, last question of what the day. <laughs> Autonomous cars. You think we'll ever see them? Not next year. When are we gonna, what's in your our thoughts lifetime? on that? Yeah, what do you think in your lifetime? I'll make that a broader question. Well, like you were saying before we started this recording, uh, will the government allow it? Will people allow it? And I think I think to a certain degree people enough people want it. I think it I think to a certain degree enough people want it and enough people who are inventors and and people that run these companies like Ford and Tesla, et cetera, they they want to make it happen because they believe that there's a market. Just like electric vehicles. Right. Well, it's only two percent of total sales. Right, <laughs> but but I think there's I think on that same note, there's more people that want electric vehicles that would never buy one just because they realize it's impractical when they go to buy one for their lifestyle, or sure. they don't have the money or whatever. But people are like, oh yeah, electric cars are great for the environment. Of course, we should have electric cars. Of course, we should have autonomous cars mm -hmm. because it makes things convenient for people. But I think that we're going to eventually hit a roadblock of something called the uncanny valley. Now, if you don't know what the uncanny valley is, this principle is used in uh, inventions, usually for like robots and AI and things mm -hmm. like that. When you're talking to your phone, when you're talking to Siri or Alexa or Google or whatever, right? And and it responds to you. You know it's a robot, right? In fact, they do a really good job of taking even the recordings of real people and making sure that it doesn't sound too real. Those because, are real people that do those yeah, voices. Yeah, yeah, they're real voice actors that actually do. Hello, how can I help you? Well, he's got that down pretty good, doesn't he? <laughs> so yeah. um, essentially what they do is they make it a little bit fake. And I think that it because it actually triggers something in our brain that humans cannot handle things that are too human that aren't human. So, so if a car can, it's called, what is this called again? The uncanny valley. The uncanny so, valley. Yes. So if a, yeah, because it's uncanny, right? Okay. But so the valley so part's a, weird. Yeah, because at a certain point it just drops. Okay. So, um, okay. I figured I'd ask so, for you because I've never heard of this before either. So, so at, essentially at a certain point it just becomes too uncomfortable. The car drives itself like a human would drive it. And at a certain point you can't tell whether or not a human's driving it. That, that's kind of creepy. And it would freak you. It would freak me out, honestly. Cause it's I, like a 2001 Space Odyssey or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So, Open the bay doors. <laughs> you know? But even like we were talking about this when auto braking technology and things were first coming out, mm -hmm. that it was incredibly uncomfortable, especially for me, because um, you had you had t tossed me the keys to a car to test drive. Mm -hmm. And you said, hey, take this for a drive. Kind of see what you think. So I go out and I think like somebody had braked and I didn't brake quick enough or something. Or the and, car didn't think you broke quick or, enough. Right. Or the car, more more than likely, the cars, they were very, very sensitive at the beginning when this tech, when this technology, yeah. the, the automatic um, emergency braking, which they want to make standard. Yeah, Ford braking mitigation, whatever. They got a hundred different names the, for yeah, it. Yeah, same thing. Basically, the car stops so you don't hit the vehicle in front of you. Right. But when that first happened, when it first came out, it was tuned to be very aggressive. Mm -hmm. And it Real aggressive. It, it was ridiculous. And it freaked me out when I was driving for the first time and the car just slammed on the brakes without me telling it to. I still have a vehicle that does that. And I had, I disconnected it. Yes. And I, I had to like stop and call you and mm -hmm. say, I don't know what just I remember happened, that. but it freaked me out. And I, and I, once I understood what was happening, then I was okay driving it. But think about how many people get in a brand new car for the first time or a lease. Right. They don't even know. And they don't know about or their car. Or even a rental car. Cars are so complicated. Yeah. How can you cover uh, the most complicated consumer product that you'll ever buy in like 30 minutes before you have to go drive the car away because you have to go pick up your kids from school. Yeah, the, the dealer delivery is critical. And so that's why I just tell people don't ever blow by that. Right. Okay. So it, that's, so that's you know, big, big thought process, but that's kind of where right. I am on that Well, topic. I'll go back to my usual, if you've heard of any of my previous videos, we still haven't got government regulation. And I'm thinking in 2021, we're going to hear them say, ah, you could build a car without a steering wheel and pedals. Uh-uh, I'm not getting in that no. amusement ride. And if you're into that, go ahead and put that in the comments below because I'm telling you right now, most people say, oh, yeah, I have no problem with it until you get into a pod that you're in traffic with people that are driving vehicles. I think that gives you a lot of concern, especially mm -hmm. if you put your kids in there. Uh, our our technology is not there yet. It's well, not anywhere I've been close. I'm in autonomous, full autonomous cars. Right. But on you a have test your hand track. For, no, on the street between us, Palo Alto and Las Vegas. I'm saying without a steering wheel, though. Oh, no. Only on oh, a test no, track. I'm, they not, can't, I'm not doing that. No. What? Okay, here's, here's a big question. For, what about the moral question? Okay. Okay. 
there's there's a person that's in, walking through the street. The car's got a break. Does Didn't it this kill? just happen and someone got killed? Yes. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> just saying. Do, does it kill the person in the street or does it kill the passenger? And this is this is not so, this is something well, because that, it's got to decide what's more important. Right. And how and, do you know who that person is and who you are? It doesn't. It just knows there's something in the vehicle. Right. But there are and there's something in the road. But there's tests. Mm-hmm. There's an online test that you can take. To that, that there's a, I believe it was a university and they were trying to test of course it was. what, <laughs> what people were thinking, like should, does, is it more utilitarian? Is it more personal? So what did the, what did the results say? So they haven't done the results yet, at least that I've seen. I'm curious. But, but I went through Who's and more, I and think I, both are important. Right. But it, you know, if, if you I, can't stop in that time window, what do you do? Well, what would you do? As a person, I would have no problem driving on the sidewalk, on the lawn, or exactly. whatever, not to hurt another human or an animal in the roadway. Right, and I think that's the normal human response. But right, then but you computers have to, aren't human. Right, but then you that's exactly the problem. Okay, mm-hmm. you're not a human. The, or, or, the car's not human. The car's driving you. It doesn't make the, the same car, decisions the same no, way we the do. the car has to make the decisions that it thinks Within is seconds. best. Yeah. I mean, you can go to like dystopian future, like cyberpunk type stuff. Okay. That's way and, beyond me. <laughs> uh, right. But they have like self-driving cars and, right. and kind of the, the dystopian future, like framework of ideas for, for artificial intelligence is, well, of course the, the human that's in my, in this vehicle owns me. So I'm going to do everything I can to protect the human. Yeah, until there's a a mother pushing a baby across the street in a stroller. Right. Okay. But then okay, how so, do you define how one person's more valuable than another? Right. So that's the that's the other problem is that it that's went, not gonna when, work. When it went through all the tests and I did the whole thing, it took about twenty minutes or so. Oh wow. And yeah, and and it was asking things like, okay, the person is a doctor uh, on their way to save someone's life. This person's a child. How you know, does the car know? The car. Well, that's what doesn't it's, know it's, who's behind the wheel even today. Well, well, it's not going to do the, uh, what is, what is trying to have the social, uh, the thing social. where they're like, no, like they have your social credit score, right? Yes. The social credit well, the, score. Yeah. There's no way that's ever going to happen here. One, but well, two, but two, to be able to integrate that into a car and then have the car, have a car make the decision. Like, let's say you jump into the road, whoever you may be, what the car is going to decide how valuable your life is and then yeah, decide no, to kill you or the driver. I think this is the, this is the future of why we were not going to see autonomous vehicles. Right. So the, you've got that. Plus you've got hackers. The yeah. hackers are out. These kids sit there. They got nothing to do. They hack into the government. They hack into everything. It's like a it's challenge. It's easier than ever to learn how to hack. Right. And, and there's no firewall that's been able to restrict everyone. No, I'm well, you know, we, everybody They'd gets like hacked to. all the time, even if you don't realize it, right. it's just, it just depends on whether or not you have anything valuable. Right. And then but, the, the big one is weather. There's no control on weather. So weather was a big one that's actually been a factor in a lot of crashes for autonomous testing. And you've talked a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, well, we are in Buffalo. You could be leave for work in the morning and find that on the way to work, boom, there's a, you know, a whiteout, a snowstorm. Or if you're down in Arizona, I've been in sandstorms. They come out of nowhere and it's just the way the winds blow and you got tumbleweed and it's coming at you. It's like, okay, you would might pull over to the side of the road and wait so you can see. But the car might pull over and just park it and go, we're not going anywhere. And you're like, what do you mean? I know exactly where I'm going and what yep. I'm doing. So a computer's not going to think in the same common sense modes that a human would. Right. And and beyond that, weather happens all the time. You've got ice, you've got black ice, which could happen any time. Mm. Even though some of that information is there with like the weather channel and everything else and NOAA, you're still not going to be able to control the weather. And that's the huge Huge factor that plus all the other ones we talked about, they're going to, we're not going to see autonomous cars. I I think we may not. We'll see a lot of that technology making cars safer. Like we see now yeah. blind spot detection and the t- technology we talked about, that kind of stuff makes life easier for you. It makes it safer on the road. Right, Cause it's, it's assisting you. It's not taking right. over for you. Yes. Yeah, so I think you're going to see a lot more assistance because right now we're really only at level three. There's no level four or level five available for production today. And that there are five levels to full autonomy, zero being an old car. And, you know, one is analog brake. So as you start seeing all this, yeah. I think we're so far out. But I'd love to hear your feedback and your comments. Do you want autonomous cars? You know, are you willing to get into something like a steering wheel? Uh-huh. Do, do you agree with anything that, <laughs> that we said? We went kind of all over the place talking about autonomous Candy cars. That was interesting. I'd never heard that before. Yeah. And I think it's true. If you were to see a cyborg, if I go back to like total recall, it'd be really weird to see a person you weren't sure is a person is a robot and i don't a replicant yes well i i think it just makes people uncomfortable and we're far off the path but as far as the future we don't know what it holds but there's a lot of exciting things going on in the auto industry and it's not just electric cars no matter what government official says this is what they think we want 
We are here, at least in the U.S. and other countries. I know you may not have that option, but here in North America, people are going to buy whatever they want. Yep. So. All right. And uh, thank you for listening to our very long conversation about <laughs> all things going on this yeah, year and, and into the future. We're, no, we're going to put this on social media. You can follow Paul and you can yep. follow me on all forms of social media. We're on literally everything from uh, Twitter and the normal to I'm on Tumblr still, and I'm on Parlor. I'm on all these different things. I'm big things. on Instagram. Go follow I'm me on, on Instagram. Everything. <laughs> but we love to get your comments, and as we get new content, we'll put that out for you. And check out our website, which is in English and Spanish. We have some new contributors. And, oh, the podcast. Yeah, well, for carcoachreports.com. And the podcast is great. Yeah. Total, Total Car Score Podcast. And actually, you had a very interesting conversation with Paul Bryan, uh, Paul on, Bryan on, on one of the episodes <laughs> yeah. where you talked about uh, the future of auto shows, which is something we didn't touch on here, but I highly recommend recommend you go and check that You'll out. We'll be surprised. We'll leave a link down below for you. Very, very interesting conversation. Yeah. So, I mean, we're doing all that. And of course, if you want more car smarts, you can check out my book, Lauren Fix's Guide to Loving we Your Car. Right here. Yeah, we got Look, it right here. Yes. And you can get your own copy by just following the link. We appreciate you following us and watching. And uh, we'd love to hear your comments. I'm sure they're going to be good like they are always. Always. And we wish you Happy New Year. Thank God it's 2021. <laughs> yeah. Have a safe one and we'll see you next time. Take care.